Welcome to the King of the Hill Shootout Invitational, the second line ball pool tournament. Don't know how to play line ball? Watch this video here. Now you know how to play, what is the rules for this tournament? Six teams of two battle it out to become King of the Hill. Win five points in a row and you win the tournament as the champion. The longer you stay on the hill, the more obstacles in your way of winning. If you lose, you fall off the hill and go to the back of the waiting queue. There is a 50 point cap. If we do not have a winner, the team with the longest winning run is the champion. If two teams are tied, the team with the most total points is the champion. For a full breakdown of the rules in detail, read the pinned comment. Now let's play, handing over to our commentator, Ray Clark. Hello, welcome to episode three of the second line ball tournament, the King of the Hill. Who will be the King of the Hill? As is always the case, we're playing here at the Cousins Lounge in Canterbury. And first up, the Red Hot Chili Potters and Daddy's Clackers. Uh, Daddy's Clackers about to make this first shot. And that looks to me like Chris, who, who co-started this, this whole tournament uh, together with Max. The, the two guys sort of making up the rules as they went along, literally. Uh, and the game has adapted since 2016 when it was first played. Uh, it's a fascinating history of playing line ball. And uh, you'll get the gist as we go along. If you're, you're just joining us for the first time, it is addictive. You can watch this and, and, and perhaps uh, just have a little look around, find the rules. But you, the, the fun thing is to watch it and try and work out where the rules are. And there you will see that the red hot chilli potters have just lost a point, uh, mainly because Daddy's Clackers has barged them out of the way, out of the scoring zone here. Gosh, that shot, barging everything out of the way. And anything that goes into the out-of-bounds area is out-of-bounds, as you saw. That red ball going into that back pocket, that's out of play. Uh, which gives, in theory, the red-hot chilli potters a one-ball advantage. But that doesn't always mean much in this game. Whatever happens, don't touch that black ball or the bottom pockets. So despite being one ball less at the moment, Daddy's Clackers... Uh, still ahead here, although Daddy's Clackers win. Uh, you can't get much more ahead than that. Black ball contact uh, from the Red Hot Chili Potters. See, some games, you could be here for quite a while. Uh, if you remember the previous episode, at one time, I think we were up to about 7-6 and the game had been lasting some time. And then you get another game and we're out of here. Daddy's Clackers and Maximum Impact. Now, this could be good because for Daddy's Clackers, uh, apart from Max Barrett, who invented the game together with Chris, so he's got Dad to contend with, but Dad's partner is Chris, who co-invented the game. And then Maximum Impact is Max. The clue is in the name, you see. You hadn't realised that. Oh, yes or no. Depending on your point of view, I suppose. Maximum impact win. Daddy's clackers are history. Now the ball is potted. And, and that's an example of one of those short games. What was that, a minute? A couple of minutes? The next one could be 5, 10, 15 might be pushing it. But some of the games can last a while. You, you saw the black ball there being positioned. Uh, that's got to be positioned either by a referee or with agreement between all of the players. But it must hit all three cushions as to where it's positioned. Back in episode one, we had the ball, I think, right in the middle of that score line. It was right in the way of every shot. You, do you know, I thought that was going to start with an end. Uh, line aid getting perilously close to that pocket there. But no, they live to see another day. Uh, maximum impact here. Oh, oh, very risky, very chancy. I, I wouldn't have done that, not me. But then I'm not playing, I'm not the expert. Um, you can't quite see the point of that, to be honest. That yellow ball, in, out, risked going into the pocket. And no point was scored. <laughs> A similar tactic being taken by Line Aid here. Come on, lads and ladies. Uh, make a name for yourself. From... Maximum impact is Simran. Yeah, that's safe. That's the point. 
Yeah, that, that's what I like. Always the advice. Yeah, go go that way. Yeah, yeah, hit that. Actually, there's more balls in the playing zone at the moment than in the scoring zone. That can change. No, not by much. Uh, still with a score of just one to maximum impact. Uh, line aid yet to score. I think they had a score and then they lose it again. And that's the, that's the magic of this, you see. Oh, and that's even more magical. It's game over. Line aid win the point. Uh, the ball potted. Yeah, a bit of a result for Line Aid there. Every Tuesday, you can watch our latest edition, our latest episode. Uh, they're uploaded at six o'clock UK time. And you can always go back to look at previous games as well and uh, build up to the position that we're in now. The Wet Bandits and Line Aid. Line Aid playing here once again, just checking that everything's in order. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, there's the, there's the scoring zone. Uh, the balls are all in, in the right lane. The ball's all in the right line there. And we're in and off and out. <laughs> uh, that ball's still in play, but uh, not scoring, obviously, in the play zone. That might put in an appearance a little later with a gentle nudge or a, a thump, perhaps, is the case there. And in fact, that didn't really pay off for line A. They hit the red with the idea of getting it out of here, and it was uh, their own ball that failed to score. Taking the wet bandits ahead now with... Uh, with two balls in, in the scoring zone. Line made here, the winners of the uh, previous game. Yeah, they're, they're there to be, uh, to be looked at, uh, beating maximum impact last time around, and they're, they're playing this pretty seriously. The Wet Bandits with Byron and Hoy. They came second in the last tournament. Yeah, now that worked well. I can see the beauty of that. I thought that was going at a bit of a speed, but no, it was slowed down nicely by hitting the opponent's ball and taking it back into the play zone and reducing their score. Which is now picked up again because uh, two balls with the one hit. Watch that pocket. Watch that black ball. And again, is that going out of play? Yes. Get out of here. One ball less for the Wet Bandits to play there. And if it goes full term, then that means that it stands to reason that uh, if all of the line aid balls are in the scoring zone... And the other team, the Wet Bandits, have lost just one ball. Then you do the sums. You do the math. I like the way they say that in America. You do the math. We say you do the maths in the UK. Yeah, I know. It's almost another ball out of play there. Uh, the game continues if uh, the ball... Any of the balls uh, pocketed in those uh, middle pockets, but uh, these M ones, serious matter. It's game over. Line aid ahead. Whoa, hang on, can't keep up with that, but I can see a ball going in that pocket. Uh, line aid win the point. The ball was potted. Line aid have won two in a row. The white ball now enters the scoring zone. Neither team can hit it, and a draw counts as a win for the challenger. Yeah, bit complex to take in, but just watch the pictures. Uh, you'll see where we go here. Line aid and the ball bashers. I love the fact that the ball bashers are fielding a team of three, but there's nothing to stop them. Absolutely nothing to stop them. Yeah, you have a go. OK, see how we get on this time. Line aid, uh, Alex and Ardit. Alex, one of the most dedicated players of this game. There's that other thing. I'm still looking for a term for that, in and out. But that sounds that sounds like something that they'd have spoken about with rugby years ago in the 60s. I remember the commentary of the rugby in the 60s. It used to be a guy from, from up north. He used to do a fabulous, fabulous commentary. I thought my uh, commentary had finished there for this game. I thought that uh, yellow ball was in the pocket. But no, uh, going into the lead, line aid. For the... Ball bashers. His tally. It's uh, new to line ball. Never played any Q sports before. So a bit of instruction going on here. Tuition. Instruction's a heavy word. Is it? Tuition. 
gently. And there's a point. Or yes, it's staying in that scoring zone. And it's the job of line aid to try and get it out of the scoring zone and out of play. There it goes in that pocket. One ball down now for the ball bashers. And line aid at two points in the lead at the moment. Don't write them off yet, though. And tit for tat. Yeah, we can get rid of a ball as well. Though that yellow ball for line aid still in play. Yeah, almost uh, self-defeating there. But no, the red ball pushed out of play. Come on, Tally. You did OK last time. A bit of expert advice there as to where to go. Hit my finger. Well, don't hit my finger. <laughs> that sort of area. That'll do. That's OK. Line aid now looking to take advantage of their their lead. Just a gentle little tap. And that should get two balls into the scoring zone. You see how the, the, the score can fluctuate as you go along. It is unpredictable. And that's the beauty of the game. Throw in that black ball and white ball, which everybody's being very careful to avoid. Have you noticed all the plays on the other side of the table? I wonder why that is. <gasps> Well, it was. <laughs> Line Aid win the point. The black ball uh, was contacted. Uh, Line Aid have won three in a row now. Uh, previous conditions apply. Uh, now the challenger can hit the white ball. The king of the hill just can't. <laughs> well, here we go. Line Aid again. If it were tennis, they'd be calling for a bathroom break now, wouldn't they? Line Aid and Red Hot Chili Potters. And it's the Red Hots to go, first of all. They are the challengers, so hitting that white ball. OK there. Had it been Line Aid, a different matter entirely. We'd have been talking about the next game. Close. Uh, I'm coming back for another go. No, it's in the scoring zone. As was the Chili Potter's ball, but no, back into the play zone. So not out of play. It's uh, it's there. Line eight again on a roll at the moment. And taking advantage of it as well. Yeah, just gentle is safe. Yeah. Ah, this is where it gets it gets serious. No, don't go that way. No, don't lose the ball. You're doing okay. You're on a run. It's a team advice here from Alex and Ardit. Oh, very, very. Well, it's a sexy little shot, to be honest. Look at that. Snuck in round the back. That's safe. Ball safe. That's a point. Ah, and that was quite impressive as well. Uh, the Red Hot Chili Potters score. Uh, more than doubling uh, from one to three. I don't know what the term is. It's not trebling, is it? It's trebling. Treble the score with one ball. Yeah. Line eight still ahead here. Uh, three balls apiece to go. And that's that's the beauty when you can score two points with, with one ball. It's not, I'm, I'm trying to think of any other sport that you could do that with. Any other game you could do that. I don't think you can. I mean, there's always tennis when you get 15 with one. I never have worked that one out. Now, you don't want that pocket. It'll be out of play if you do that. That sort of general direction, I think, was the suggestion from Line Aid. Ah, oh, I get it. Ah! Oh. That wasn't the plan. Uh, Red Hot Chili Potters win the point. The black ball was hit and it was all going so well. Yeah, hit it there against the cushion. That's what you're going to... And it's just going to bounce up there. But into the equation wasn't the black ball. 
So, at the end of episode three, Line Aid have equaled Maximum Impact's three-point streak. Both teams are currently tied on four total wins. This episode saw Line Aid dominate the table. Will anybody be able to go on a better winning streak? Going into episode four, the Red Hot Chili Potters are king of the hill with a one-point streak and must play against Daddy's Clackers. Who are your favourites? Who would you put money on? Not that I'm suggesting you do, but, you know, perhaps the tuba smarties. I bet you three smarties that they're going to do. Well, up to you. Uh, man or woman of the match? Alex, we reckon. Alex Elwood. For his composure, precision, decision-making under pressure. Or should it be somebody that's a bit faster? Oh, let's just hit it and see where it goes. Uh, Alex, man of the match. And that's it from this episode. Join me again for the next episode of Lineball next Tuesday, uploaded at six o'clock. I'm Ray Clark. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.